Christian Jungwirth called me in Los Angeles and said he had the opportunity of doing an exhibition in a large space that was about to be torn down and asked me if I would be interested. And he sent me some photographs of this extraordinary building and I thought what a great opportunity to put together a big exhibition. The majority of this exhibition was actually already mounted and had been an exhibition in Los Angeles, Houston, Miami had been touring. But uh, we added about another 25, 30 pictures for this exhibition, making it this actually the largest exhibition that I've ever held. It's great to have it here in Graz because the space is great and uh, my reception here has been amazing with the people. I've been, I'm overwhelmed, but uh, unfortunately we were so busy with this show, I need to come back to uh, actually experience the city and uh, spend more time here. Andy is a, actually a great story. The ads for LA Iwerks were famous faces and appeared in a magazine called uh, Interview, which was Andy Warhol's magazine. At the point in time that I was early on in the campaign, Andy had just signed a contract with Ford Modeling Agency and called me up one day. And Andy had kind of a strong stammer. He stuttered a little bit. And he called me one day and said, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Greg, do you think that uh, uh, um, LA Iwerks would be uh, uh, interested in me for the campaign, in so many words? And I said, oh, I think so, probably. And so Andy flew out to LA, and uh, he'd been to my home before, but he came out, and uh, we made that iconic picture for LA Iwerks. And what's interesting, I think, in a photographer's career is you never know when that special picture is going to come along, but that ended up being one of my most recognizable images. Michael I worked with many times over the years. We did a lot of shoots, and he was an incredible subject. You know, I miss him dearly. And uh, Michael said to me, you know, he says, I have some pet tarantulas, and I'd love to do a picture with one of my tarantulas. They have just shed their skin, and their skin, believe it or not, looks exactly like the tarantula. It's almost like a snake shedding its skin. So that's actually the skin of one of his pet tarantulas. When I shot Tom in the 70s, when we did that picture, I believe it was the late 70s, um, I photographed him for three days. He was living at the Tropicana Hotel in Los Angeles, at a hotel in a hotel room. It's a mess with shit everywhere. And uh, I would pick Tom up in the morning at the hotel, <clears throat> and we would go out for the day and make pictures all over L.A. We'd, and it was crazy. We'd go to Pasadena and shoot in this graveyard of old signs. Sometimes we'd go up to the Hollywood Observatory. We'd go to Hollywood Boulevard and shoot in a tattoo parlor. And for three days we made pictures. Today, if you get a star for 15 minutes, a half an hour for a shoot, you're lucky. The story behind this photograph is quite funny because it was made for an album cover. The name of the album, I believe, was Heart Attack and Vine. And the record company said to me, we would like you to have Tom Waits in a tuxedo. I said, not going to happen. And they go, what do you mean? I said, he's not going to put on a tuxedo. Well, would you ask him? And of course, they're way too afraid to say something. So um, I said to Tom one morning, I said, Tom, uh, the record company would like to see you in a tuxedo. And in Tom's voice, he says, well, the only way I'd wear a fucking tuxedo is I'd probably get shot. So the concept behind that picture was actually putting all the blood and having the gun and the girl in the background. And uh, later they airbrushed all the blood out of the picture. John's probably my, one of my very, very best friends in the world. And uh, he's so well known for that little pencil-driven mustache that it might be fun to come in close and do a picture. And it's almost pornographic, but it's kind of an interesting photograph. I like it a lot. Christopher Walken was also one of, was one of my favorites, and it, uh, a picture that I speak a lot about in my lectures because uh, in a situation like this with Christopher Walken, it was one of the early things in my career that taught me to be open to spontaneity, to have that spontaneous moment. And Chris was up on my roof top of my studio and walked up to my kind of signature gray walls, and I just that moment clicked, and it was kind of fun. He was an odd duck, but I expected him to be a bit of an odd duck, but he was, he was quite amazing to photograph and very present 
when we shot. Tootsie with Dustin Hoffman as for commercial work uh, was certainly one of the first pictures that kind of helped put me on the map. In the case of Tootsie, I actually was in the movie and Dustin was promised a day where he could become famous and he and I, he wanted to do a photo shoot with me in the movie where the character of Dorothy became famous and did magazine covers. Shooting a motion picture campaign is more, I'm more like a hired gun, work for hire. So I'm actually sometimes being dictated to, this is what we're looking for. When I'm doing portrait commissions, generally it's a little bit more open to my own personal interpretation. In my early 30s, I wasn't shooting pictures for myself, I was shooting pictures for other people. And so I gave myself kind of a self-imposed assignment to, to shoot, uh, start shooting nudes, pulling the camera back, shedding people of their clothes, still maintaining the style of my strong highlights and my hard shadows, but basically letting it evolve into a different body of work that became my work, that I didn't have to please anyone but myself. And Iman was a friend of mine in one of my very early subjects and one of my early nudes, and of course, you know, I love the photograph, and she's such a great beauty, so elegant. You know, I've really always been interested in, in portraits, and I've never really been particularly successful in my eyes in terms of shooting anything that couldn't talk back to me because I didn't really have a passion for it. I think a good portrait is uh, when it connects with the viewer, and I think it stems from building a relationship on honesty and trust and confidence between the subject and uh, the photographer. I think that uh, the connection has to be honest and true, and I think. Uh, a picture is most successful when it doesn't necessarily answer all the questions but leaves something to the imagination.